Okay, peeps, welcome back. So today we're going to be covering the Grayscale Trusts, mainly LTCN, HZEN, and BZHG, in no particular order. We're also going to address um, a question a co question and comment that we had about um, Grayscale creating more shares for accredited investors or something like that. So anyways, uh, with that being said, let's get it. So first thing I want to address is uh, we did not read the actual email from Grayscale about them wanting to basically bring in accredited investors or wealthy investors into the Grayscale trusts. Um, do I think it's really relevant to the price in the bull run coming up? To be honest, not really. Um, I say this quite simply because I can give you guys a, a literal analogy that just happened. Okay, so you guys know the spot Bitcoin ETFs got approved. Um, there was a time frame when Grayscale was selling an equal amount of GBTC or Bitcoin, I'm not sure which one, to the selling pressure that they had was equal to the buying pressure that BlackRock had, okay? So let's say that GBTC, I don't, I don't remember the, what the exact numbers are, so we'll go hypothetical. Okay, let's say GBTC was selling 10,000 Bitcoin. Uh, well, BlackRock was buying 10,000 Bitcoin, okay? And what kind of effect did that have on the price? Basically, the price went absolutely nowhere because the buyers and the sellers were equal. They were basically having a battle between the bulls and the bears. Once the selling pressure was over, BlackRock was still buying. Guess what? The price of Bitcoin went up. So as you guys can see here on Bitcoin, the price is at nearly 52,000. We thought it was going to get stopped at 48,000. Obviously, it didn't. Um, so the technicals couldn't stop it. The selling pressure couldn't stop it. What does that tell you about LTCN and other cryptocurrencies? And not to mention the uh, previous video that we showed you guys with the on Bitcoin. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. It's Bitcoin specific uh, with the Google trends with Google searches on crypto and Bitcoin. Those are sitting at all time lows. OK, what that means is retail has not even entered the space yet. OK. When you got Bitcoin sitting at 100 at the top of the bull market, that indicates that retail has already FOMO'd in. Bitcoin currently is sitting somewhere between a 15 to a 20. So what I'm trying to say here is even if there's lockup periods and at some point the wealthy investors that Grayscale lets in wants to sell for profit and say October, November, December, right around the time of the bull run, it's not going to matter because at that time, retail still probably will not even be in the markets. Okay, you'll have institutions fumbling in. The price of Bitcoin will snap 70,000. It'll go up to 200, 300,000, whatever it's going to do. But in between that time period, at some point, retail will come in. Okay, and that's when the prices of all of these things will go absolutely bonkers. I can tell you guys this personally from somebody that invested in Doge and turned $200 into 14,000. Okay. Uh, when retail comes in, it matters. Trust me when I tell you. Uh, so we bought, I think it was $200 worth of Doge at two tenths of a penny or something like that and went to 70 some cents. Uh, and a lot of that was because of retail. It wasn't because of the whales. It wasn't because of institutions. Okay. So the real parabolic move comes when retail gets in. I can pretty much more or less tell you that all of the selling from these institutional investors or a lot of it is probably going to, for the, va the vast majority of it, or the most of the selling that comes from the people that would get into Grayscale will probably be over by the time the retail investors get in. Because once the retail investors FOMO in shortly after that, this is how it usually works. The whales and the smart money are going to dump on retail and then it's going to be the end of the bull cycle. So do I think that this is going to stifle the price of LTZ and the other Grayscale trusts to where they couldn't go to new all-time highs? No, I don't. Something else that I want to point out to you guys, uh, GSOL, uh, we're not going to cover this one too much. You're basically, your support's between 180 to 202. We would be buying somewhere between 78 to, I would say, probably about 166, so maybe a DCA strategy. But as you guys can see here, a GSOL is already in price discovery. The institutional investors have not even come in yet. Retail has not even come in yet. The bull run's not even started yet, Okay. The Bitcoin having still two months away, and this thing is already at all time highs. That should tell you everything you need to know in terms of what could potentially, bullishly speaking, happen in the next 12 to 18 months. So, with that being said, let's get into the charts. So, you guys can see we had another wick rejection off of this 
previous these previous wicks here, these highs. Uh, we close back below resistance. I would say that's pretty bearish. Probably going to expect to get another dip somewhere between, I'd say about, we would be buying somewhere between seven bucks to maybe about 10 bucks. I'd say that's a pretty good price. Um, looking at the grand scale of things. Um, so you guys can see here, if we zoom out, that the all time high is roughly about $510 a share. So from 10 bucks, that's about a 51X. Uh, I would say that's a pretty good return, in my opinion. Uh, it would take a very long time in a very, very small cap stock that turns into like a mag seven stock to get a 51 X. Um, and you could, I mean, there, there, I'm not going to say you could, but I'm going to say that there is the possibility to make that within the next 12 months in this particular crypto posi position here. Um, so I do think it's going to get dipped back down and we are still kind of somewhat touching overbought territory. So that would make perfect sense if it did. Now, in terms of price, uh, potential. I do think that LTCN could go up to a thousand dollars. I say that simply because Litecoin just had another halving. Bitcoin had a halving. Now we have the spot Bitcoin ETFs being approved, and that's already passed. And the halving's coming up. And um, I think all of that in combination with mass adoption from the masses. Now that basically the SEC green lighted it. Uh, could potentially push the price of LTCN up to a thousand bucks. That's just my opinion. So HSEN, you guys know how we did this. We basically scalped it for about $130 in 60 minutes. Um, so we have this massive breakout. This is both bullish and bearish. The RSI is overbought, which could indicate a pullback. Uh, it's bearish because it closed below this resistance with this wick rejection. It's bullish because it's above this current resistance with a body candle close. So I'd say the potential buy zone is between 250 to 291. The sell zone would be 380 to 420 if we measure that. Just say you got it roughly in the middle of the zone. You'd still be looking at roughly about a 55% gain. So BCHG, this one's also looking very bearish. You can see we got rejected off of this massive red candle here with a wick. Close below with this quadruple top here below resistance. That's pretty bearish. If we were going to buy this, we'd probably buy more somewhere between 240 to about 309 a share. The MACD has crossed uh, into a death cross. Whether price reflects that or not, we'll just have to wait and see. But if you manage to get it somewhere here in this box and then hold to immediate resistance, that's about a 60% gain and the higher resistance, about 121%. So GXLM uh, broke out of the rising wedge bearish, which is typically how those things go. Uh, it doesn't really mean anything. Uh, it will only matter if it gets a crack below the EMAs, but we won't know yet until we get to that point. I would say I would probably start buying somewhere between these wicks to this particular candle right here. Uh, there's a couple of reasons for that. It's closer to the start of the wedge, which is generally the target for a rising wedge. And that's kind of also where previous support wicks were, was right around that same area. So potentially 1350 to about, I would say 19 bucks or so, your macro supports between 440 to about 1150 and your resistance is somewhere between $35 to potentially as high as 52 bucks. So if we do a measurement on that. Let's just say you got in somewhere around here between these two swing points. Uh, you could be looking at potentially 84% all the way up to about 186%. So that's a pretty good return. Uh, ETH, -E, this is based on the actual Ethereum crypto. This is very bullish. I would say all of this is very bullish. So um, the only thing that's not bullish here, obviously, is the RSI. There is some sort of bearish divergence going on there, but it hasn't played out yet. EMAs are fanning out. It tested and bounced off of the support. It's writing the EMAs up. That's all very bullish. If I was looking for a pullback, I'd buy somewhere between, I'd say, 1780 to about uh, 20 bucks. I'd say about 20 bucks. So your macro supports down here between two dollars and 470. At this point, I would say it's not likely to reach that level. So if you got in around that support, you'd be looking at about 37 percent to as much as 65 percent in the immediate short term. Uh, ETH Classic, this one's getting rejected off resistance, but it is not closing down below any of these candle bodies here. So I would say it's probably still bullish. Uh, this potential death cross here is a bit concerning, but uh, we haven't seen anything play out yet. 
Uh, it's pretty much just a battle between the Bulls and the Bears. I mean, the Bulls are holding up support. The Bears are holding down resistance. So um, we kind of just have to wait and really see how this is going to play out in the coming weeks. Uh, this is what I like to refer to as a trading range because that's pretty much what it is until we get a break in one direction or, or another. It's not really going to tell us much. Uh, if I was buying, I'd buy somewhere between 918 to I'd say probably about maybe 1080 a share. Uh, macro support is going to be between 303 or $3. We'll just call it to about five bucks. So if you got somewhere in here around these EMAs, let's say right here, potentially anywhere from 34% to about 60%. Uh, Zcash, not really much to tell you guys on Zcash. It's kind of just in a huge range. This is the bottom of the range. This is the top of the range up here. Uh, your macro support is between, I would say, still currently between 140 to 177 a share and resistance between 270 to 399 or $4 per share. If you got it in support, you'd be looking at somewhere between 71 to potentially 153%. Uh, we ever already covered GSOL, so we're going to go to MANA. Uh, MANA is, once again, I would say in a trading range. Uh, this is not really surprising. This does happen sometimes. It's very common in futures, believe it or not, which is one of the things that makes trading futures so frustrating. Um, but as of right now, I would say support is between basically about 10 bucks and 12 bucks is where I'd be looking to buy. Uh, your macro support is again, 160 to 350 and macro resistance between 730 to about $20 and 30 cents. Now, if you manage to pick it up in between these EMAs and hold it, uh, you get about 55% to about 80%. Uh, GBAT has not broken the downtrend. It's still sitting on support. So I would say, once again, this is kind of in an indecision mode. Uh, if I was going to be looking to buy this, I would probably be looking to start buying somewhere between 440 to um, 509 for a potential bullish breakout here. Uh, there's no guarantee that it could happen, but it's possible. I would say based on the previous move, I would say it's likely. So if you manage to get it somewhere in this zone, you'd be taking a look at roughly about a two extra money. If history is to repeat itself, if we get another breakout like we saw previously. Uh, so G-Link, this thing has moved up to our surprise. It has moved up even more. Um, I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> Both Chainlink and uh, Solana have been moving up alongside Bitcoin. That's not really surprising as those are kind of major crypto projects, so to speak. Uh, if I was going to buy into this thing, I would probably buy somewhere between, I'd say about 40 bucks to about $49. Um, Keep in mind, as you guys can see, based on the chart history here, this is in price discovery mode. We are not even past the having yet. This is obviously very bullish for the Grayscale Trusts. Uh, so when you guys have some doubt in your mind, look, I'm not, I'm not trying to pander to anybody's feelings here or anything like that. That's not what markets are about. Markets are about, you know, logic and intellect, basically analyzing, not trading with your emotions, just simply trading with what the charts are saying, right? not financial advice, but uh, the fact that we're not even past that having, the fact that retail hasn't even FOMO'd in yet, Bitcoin is not past its all-time highs, and two of these trusts already are price discovery is very, very bullish in my opinion. So we told you guys the buy zone. So your resistance would probably sit, I would say, somewhere around the high of this wick, so about 80 bucks to potentially as high as $95. Uh, so if you manage to pick it up in the zone, if it comes back down that low, uh, you could be potentially looking at as much as 121%. Uh, Phil G. Uh, this, okay, so I take that back. There's actually three that are in price discovery right now. So Phil G is also in price discovery. Uh, we'll get to G live in a second. So um, I would say potentially we would buy somewhere between $37 to about $47 again, because this thing is pretty overextended. The EMAs have been fanned out for a while. I would say at some point a pullback is probably due uh, whenever you see something like this. So if we got in roughly around this range, uh, this is kind of really hard to measure, but 
you would be potentially looking at somewhere around maybe 141% to as much as about 206%. So pretty good return there if you're patient and you're willing to buy the dip. So GLIV um, or GLIV, I guess you could say that this would make four. This is also in price discovery since we're on a current cycle. We're not looking at previous cycles. Uh, so support would pretty much be in the zone at this point, I would say, based on trading actions. So somewhere between 1250 to about 15, 15 bucks, maybe 1450 Macro support is going to be between $2 and $3.90. So if you got it in the zone and you managed to hold just to the top, not including price discovery, you'd be looking at roughly about 120%. So anyways, I hope this covers the issue about the... Um, what Grayscale is trying to do with their with their trusts and I guess letting wealthier clients in. Um, hope, hope you all enjoy this content. Let us know your thoughts down below. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you all later. Peace.